hole. <laughs> but these are my favorite gym shoes and they're broken in perfectly and I refuse to buy new ones until they completely fall apart. I didn't tell them what I was doing. Wait, one second. Oh, my skin is so red. I'm trying to get some brighter light. Now you can just see my redness. <laughs> oh well. Okay. So I'm I'm here with Jessica, Hi. and she just opened a new beauty clinic called Jessica Beauty. Yes. Yes. Okay. And so she invited me to check it out and do a facial. As you can see, my skin is not the best. It got a little bad, but I stopped doing the medication that I was on before because I'm taking hormones now and doing injections, so it's just way too much. So I'm not really treating it internally, but they're gonna try and help me up out a bit today externally. Yeah, definitely. Okay, shall we go? Let's go. So I'm doing the hy hydrotherapy. Hydromagic peel. Hydromagic, Hydromagic peel today. Yeah. Jessica said it's like a five-step process of heating, extraction, um, putting serum into your skin and then cooling. This was to begin with. Yes. Oh, it's a clear liquid. Yes. And this is what came out of my skin. So it's all the dirt and oil and dead skin cells. <laughs> skin is super sensitive as soon as you touch it it turns red so just ignore that it's completely normal it will go away but my skin feels so hydrated and already looks brighter morning it is tuesday my skin feels so good after the facial um it definitely looks a little bit brighter it's way more hydrated it feels so soft i just want to keep touching it but i shouldn't touch it but i want to touch it they got everything out especially around the nose it's so hard to clean properly in here and she just sucked all the stuff out and i always have a lot of dead skin cells and dry skin around here it like builds up and you can see it when i put on foundation and powder but it feels my nose feels so clean the plan for today is i'm gonna get up and go to the gym now and then I gotta shoot a bunch of content. I gotta do some Instagram, uh, like a sponsored Instagram photo for a post. And I've gotta edit and shoot um, the talking clips for my hat video. So let's get to that. Are you ready to get up? Are you ready to get up? So I got some new lighting the other day just to make my videos look a little bit more cohesive lighting wise because I usually shoot in the sunlight and it changes throughout the video and also because typhoon season is coming in August so it's usually very dark and rainy so it's kind of hard to film. So anyways I bought these ones. I'm trying them out now because why not <laughs> but it takes so much work to set it up i'm actually tired from just doing that and i haven't even started taking photos in the past i would just buy these light boxes but this time i'm trying this diffuser i noticed a lot of beauty gurus use it i specifically looked up james charles lighting these aren't the same lights these are much cheaper versions of his but i think it does the job and the effect looks really nice i hope I want to be like someone who does flat lights because I like the way they look. 
You have to put filter on it. But I think of I course, it I will start to dark here, and so I kind of see the color. Yeah, I was thinking that too. So I also tried some with like. It is officially, it looks really bright because of my camera, but it's actually really dark outside and it's pouring rain and windy. And as you can see, it's quite dark in here because it is officially typhoon season now in Hong Kong. We're starting it off with a bang. It's a size eight, typhoon eight today. It's basically really, really strong wind and rain and it can be quite dangerous. So you're supposed to stay home. Schools are canceled, work is canceled or people work from home. It's kind of like a snow day in Kenda where I'm from. That's how I, Understand. Yeah, the husband is home. Let's go see what he's doing. As a baby, he'll grow free Scott back. What are you doing? And as much as I love to curl up next to him, I'm really behind on videos. I spent this morning getting some work done, like emails and other stuff. As you know, I think I mentioned in this video, I'm not sure though, because I'm filming a separate video on this, um, that I am working on starting a business and it's something that I don't have much knowledge about. I have never done anything like it before. So it takes a lot more time for me to set it up because I have to ask people a lot of questions, have a lot of meetings and just do research like Google things and how do you do this and, and then figure it out. Um, so it takes me a lot of time. I guess once it's up and running, it will be a little bit more smooth sailing and I don't have to focus a lot of time on that. Friday and I'm starting it off with a new challenge to my body. I'm going to try this bounce Tabata class. Bounce Limit Hong Kong is a company, this isn't sponsored by them by the way, but they're a company here doing these sort of trampoline exercise classes and they reached out to me and asked me to come check it out and try out a class. So I'm going to do that because I love trying new things. I'm a firm believer in trying everything at least once before forming your opinion, whether that to do, whether that's to do with physical things or mental things or even people. I always, I always don't listen to what people say about people or what you read about people online before actually meeting them and talking them, talking to them and forming my own opinion. Food-wise too, everything, everything. Just, just say yes, try it once, see if you like it. It's, it's a good way to go about life. You'll discover new things you like and, and uh, open up your minds. It's a 
full body. It's head to toe, everywhere. Um, the good thing I think about rebounding is that the rebounder absorbs up to 85% of the shock. So it's like very low impact. The up and down motion with acceleration and gravity, it actually makes your muscle work twice as hard to stay balanced. And yeah, I noticed that like that squat and jump was really hard it's for me. It's a little using different muscles than usual just for the normal yeah, squat. Yeah, because when you jump down, you got your body weight and the acceleration and then that rebounder catches you, right? Bounces you back up. So it's actually twice like twice the g-force as yeah. you do on the hard oh, floor. Okay. And Tabata yeah. is one of the ways that you can really get a workout in and yeah, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, it, it doesn't really feel like a workout. I know it is because I'm really sweaty and shaky, but it was it was mostly fun. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Are you, you taking all day? Yeah. Uh, I'm in another I'm in another two classes today. So oh, nice. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Okay. All the Canadians, come on in. All right. Thank you so much. Woo. Right, Careful, <laughs> please. Just got changed, a little bit of dry shampoo, a little bit of deodorant, a little bit of lipstick, and now I'm good to go. We're gonna head to our next location where we're gonna shoot a bit of content, we're gonna grab some lunch, and then there's a lot more to do today, so let's go. Are we going this way? <laughs> this is my outfit today. I recently discovered this handbag brand called M. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but they have the cutest little lantern bags, all kinds of different colors, different shapes, and I chose this green one. Green's my favorite color to wear, and it's not, it doesn't fit the most inside. It has sort of like this little bag inside to keep it in, but it fits the essentials. I got my phone in here, my gum, my phone charger, and my home card to get back into my house. That's all I need. Not really because I have a whole other bag of stuff, but let's pretend. This is, I literally lived, like the model apartment I lived in was right there at that like crosswalk where that light is. It's crazy. And now it's all changed and this is here. Oh my goodness. Parmesan fries with ketchup and black garlic mayo. It is so, so good. I love it so much so. I'm wearing it on my shirt all day. <laughs> all right, we just finished up with a little meeting. Now we're heading to our next one. Still clean white t-shirt. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> now on to the last thing of the day, last meeting, it's about my website, and then we're done. But it's the weekend. Good morning, guys. I got some work done this morning. I had a good workout. I've got clean hair, which I actually styled for once. I'm wearing a jumpsuit, and I'm feeling pretty unstoppable right now. I'm, per I'm currently in a mall because I'm gonna get some groceries for dinner tonight. Actually, that's a lie. I'm here because I'm on the quest to find some bubble tea. I'm actually probably the last person in Hong Kong to try bubble tea. It's been really popular here for a long time. Um, let me just try and get out of this market first. It's really crowded. Like I was saying, bubble tea is super popular here and super popular in many places, but I tried it for the first time about a month ago at a photo shoot and I instantly became obsessed. Now I crave it all the time. So I'm here for the tea and then we're gonna get some groceries. This is my favorite place in Hong Kong for bubble tea because they make their drinks so customizable and so delicious. So now I'm gonna teach you how to make the bubble tea of your dreams. First you wanna choose your base and most bubble tea places have um, black tea or green tea or oolong tea and then some of them have fruity bases now too like here they have lemon and then of course the Hong Kong staple milk tea and then after you want to add 
um, your fruits. Some of them have like mango or lychee or different fruits, but just beware those are syrupy, so you're gonna be adding a bit of sugar to your drink if you do that. You're gonna choose your sugar level um, from low to high, and then also if you want it hot or cold, and then you can choose your extra toppings, which aren't really toppings because they sink to the bottom, but they give the drink a bit more texture and make things really interesting to drink. I've been trying to drink a lot less coffee lately, so this is a good little afternoon snack. It's kind of a snack and a drink at once. Mission accomplished. So I ended up going for the jade lemon tea, which is a Taiwanese green tea with lemons. Half the amount of sugar, half the amount of ice, I didn't want too icy. And their aloe, because I find that really refreshing, and an ayu jelly, which he said has green tea and lemon inside that too, so it matches really nicely. So good. All right, I'm back in the wet market now, and tonight I'm gonna teach you how to make something that is easy, quick, healthy, and perfect if you have some leftover rice and some vegetables you wanna get rid of in your fridge. I'm just gonna buy a few extra fresh vegetables here and some fresh tofu, which is right here. They have an assortment. They have some dried one. Get in line here. They have some extra firm, which is what I want. Soybeans, dried tofu skin, all different versions of it. Lungo. Lungo. This place looks perfect. I think it's got everything I want to buy. Oh, you scared me. The elbow up here. What are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm making dinner. Like the good wife I am. Oh. <laughs> Only one thing. Enjoy. You have to go. My favorite is char Okay. Uh... You want to preheat the oven to 180 and you want to wash and chop all your vegetables so this is going to be a mixture of stuff that i have in the fridge with some stuff that i bought today so you can use whatever vegetables you like really i'm going to use i'm using some baby carrots today because that's what i have but you can use any color shape or size of carrot that you like now I have a little bit of tomatoes and half an onion left in the fridge, so I'm just gonna throw that in. And a lime, lime would probably taste better, but I have this lemon that was just used for zest, so I'm not gonna let it go to waste, I'm just gonna use this instead of the lime. And some optional things are lemongrass. I just think it makes the dish more fragrant, so I'm using this. And a little bit of hot chilies, because I love spicy food. So I just looked up this one, the Buddha's hand, and apparently it's a citrus fruit that you use kind of similar to lemon. It, you can use it for its zest. I'm gonna use up the old lemon for this one, but I can use this a little later and I'll let you know how it tastes. It smells like a lemon or a yuzu actually. two main dishes that's one this gluten-free paleo muesli it's a honey baked blend of nuts seeds and coconuts it's by the brand farmer joe and i just have that with some oat milk and fruit on top which is usually raspberries blueberries and bananas or i have this egg concoction which i put on this organic 
buckwheat crisp bread. I really like buckwheat because it's really high in fiber, so it really helps with digestion. So usually I just take four of the crisp breads and then I add a bit of avocado, tomato, a medium boiled egg, and I'm just gonna add a bit of smoked paprika on top. Good morning, we're in Central. Let's get run over. Um, we're just shooting some content in Central, and now we're heading to lunch to one of my favorite vegan restaurants here in Hong Kong called Grassroots Pantry. I haven't had it in a while, so I'm really looking forward to it. So Grassroots Pantry is closed in Hong Kong now. I didn't know that, that sucks. We just came to Mana. But the Poho location, which I've never been to yet, the menu's kind of the same, but a little bit different. Got this kale and hummus salad. And of course the fries, their fries are my favorite. They're really thickly cut. These are um, yams and purple sweet potatoes. And then their homemade ketchup and homemade garlic nays. And I got a green juice. Natalie went for the burger. Just finished lunch, now we're heading to a cafe for coffee. It's it's a really cute cafe because it's in the middle of this antique street that I've shown you guys a couple times before. But it's really cute, it has good coffee and they serve it in these vintage Chinese teacups that are really pretty. Are you good? It's the hottest day ever today. Currently at Maido Cafe, which is a local Chan Chan Tang here in Hong Kong, and it was opened in 1950, and it hasn't really changed since then, so because of that, it's really famous. It's in a lot of different movies, and we're here today to shoot the Pandora ad for my Instagram. This isn't a sponsored post for, for YouTube, but look how cute. They have this exclusive charm for Hong Kong. It has the egg tart, pineapple bun, and milk tea on it. So we just came here to shoot it. We just ordered our food. Wow, it's really orange here. <clears throat> Classic black and white milk cups. This is the pineapple bun. Even though it's called pineapple bun, it doesn't taste like pineapple at all. I don't really know why. It's a sort of sweet, crispy outside and then a soft, moist bun on the inside. It looks like a pineapple, like the pattern. Oh, yeah, maybe. So rice noodles and this is Hong Kong French toast which isn't really like any other places French toast they use a lot of honey and a ton of butter honestly it's not the best the food the food was just okay I think people definitely go there for the atmosphere and we didn't try everything on the menu so maybe other things are better than what we had but the noodles were very very plain and the milk tea was just mama so we're we're going to another cafe to get some coffee maybe I'm not sure but we're gonna explore this area a bit this is actually one of my favorite areas to come to I think I like this side like I like Kowloon there's always so much going on it and it feels like it feels really local very Hong Kong so much good food so many markets I just got changed I'm in all white <laughs> Which is probably not such a good idea because I'm about to drink coffee. So let's see how long this lasts. Um, we're at Kubrick Cafe, which is in a cinema nearby in Yamate. And it's it's an interesting place because it's actually a bookstore and a little shop as well as a cinema upstairs. So you have the smell of the sweet popcorn, the coffee. You can grab a book and sit down and read. And it's just a really nice atmosphere, both smell-wise and eye-wise and taste-wise, all-wise. <laughs> So we're just waiting for our coffee and gonna take some content for something else I'm working on. I keep saying we're taking content and you might think, <clears throat> what is that like? Are you taking Instagram photos? And yes, sort of, but also other things that I can't really tell you yet, as no annoying as that sounds. Thank you. Natalie's showing me this really cute shop here in the area called Chang Chang Good Store. Really? You're 
parking me? Just dropped the kid off at the salon for a haircut and we are having date day! First up, we're going to our very favorite Vietnamese restaurant in Hong Kong. It's called An Nam. It's in Causeway Bay. And then we are going to an art exhibition. Murakami is doing an exhibition here in Hong Kong at Tycoon Place. So we're going to go check it out. And who knows what else? Parents gone wild day. We're going wild. It's not that wild, just eat an exhibition. It's so wild. Maybe we'll get dessert. Maybe we will take some Instagram photos. The opportunities are endless. And then we have to pick up Rosie and then head back home. funny because you just said that. That's so cool to see that up close. They incorporated. I'm talking to myself. I thought my husband was behind me. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys. I like how they incorporated. This is a limited edition tycoon edition tote bag. I like this one. That was really nice. It was actually different than the one we saw in Japan. They incorporated a lot of different forms of art, like paintings as well as sculptures, his drawing, and and his fashion. So that was really cool. I've never seen his fashion in real life before. And they did the carpets. They did the walls. It was very very detailed. Really interesting. And he wrote little blurbs about different things on the walls and on different art. And that was really interesting to learn more about him. Not only his history, because I've read a lot of his history before, but just his thoughts about certain thing. It was really cool. I was just sitting here editing the vlog you're watching now. This is actually Sunday, so this is me right now before I upload this video. And although this video has been very, very long, um, because it is two weeks and one, I haven't really weekly vlogged in a while, and I have a lot of footage. Um, when editing this vlog, I feel like I did a lot of things, and I went out a lot, I showed you guys a lot, but it doesn't feel very personal. I don't feel like I really talked to you or connected with you in this vlog and I kind of know why and I kind of want to talk about it so I'm going to. I haven't been really feeling my best. I feel very lost. I feel very directionless lately. I think a lot of people do, worried. A lot of people do in Hong Kong lately with everything going on. Um, that and sort of things in my personal life and I still don't feel 
even close to over the death of my Jaju. Um, Hong Kong wise, <laughs> it's so hard because some, some days I wake up and I want to talk about it, but then the minute I start thinking about what I want to say, I feel really anxious and stressed and I never talk about politics on my channel. Don't want to push my views and I know no matter what I say, um, I'm going to hurt someone. And then when talking to local people around me, they feel it's probably best if I stay out of it because I've only lived in Hong Kong recently for almost two years. I'm not really educated on the history and I don't understand all the political things and political issues although I've tried to educate myself recently and do a lot of research so I definitely have a lot more knowledge now but um yeah I kind of feel like I'm not qualified to talk about it I'm not a citizen um so I've been really silent about that but I I can't say that it doesn't affect me and I do want to encourage you guys to do your own research and just educate yourself on the subject. Look it up. I'm sure you know what's going on in Hong Kong, but if for some reason you don't, then yeah, definitely look it up because it's a pretty big deal. It's a big moment um, and I'm living in it right now. So that has definitely affected me. I try my best to go out and be positive and upbeat and do fun things, but that isn't my reality. Um, when I talk to people around here, they 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 say that they like the idea of me doing things like that because they like to watch something light just switch off because there's a constant news here about the same stuff. And I know when I'm feeling down, which I have been lately, I my number one well I do a few things, but one of the things I do is turn on YouTube and just switch off my brain and dive into someone else's life, learn something new. So. Yeah, I guess I just want to be that place for you guys. I'm trying my best to be that place for you guys. Also, personal life-wise, um, as much as I don't want to talk about these things because people always tell me don't talk about these things, I feel like I want to open up more. Because whenever I do, you guys always share your past experiences with me or what you're going through or give me some tips and it always feels like I'm less alone and I feel a little better. Um, got some bad news again today that I'm not pregnant again this month and I think it really hit me hard this month because I really thought I was because of the medical help we've been getting. All signs were like really good and I felt like something was going on and I found out this morning it's not again and I had really planned a lot around it. I planned how I was going to tell Tom and I was so excited and ready and that's my own fault. I shouldn't have done that to myself but I don't know I just can't help it. And it's been such an emotional roller coaster. I think the best way to explain it is it's like a roller coaster. You feel at the beginning of each month or at, of each cycle you feel hopeful. It's like a three week hopeful rise to the top and then when it's a negative, you just go to this really fast crash downwards. That's when I'm. At, that's where I'm at right now. That lasts for like a few days, like three days, where I feel a bit just sad and down. And then I start my ascent again into the hopefulness when I start like my medication and stuff. So if I'm being honest, I feel a little bit lost lately within myself and my surroundings. Um, but I am going to do my best to carry on and uh just know people in hong kong i love you i'm sending you my love i hope you get better soon things are really really sad right now and i don't want to end this on the negative note but i just wanted to touch base and i'm gonna i'm gonna be i'm gonna feel great soon i know i am i think next week i'm gonna really treat myself i'm gonna do a lot of self-love i'm gonna be seeing my friends in this past vlog you may have noticed i was working out a lot and I was doing a lot of my content for whatever I'm working on on the side. And that's that's how I get through tough times for me. It's definitely working out. It's not even for anything physical. It just helps me mentally so much. When I wake up in a bad mood or I see the news of what's going on or I'm just feeling down. If I go to the gym about an hour later, I'm feeling so much better. I feel like a new person and then I feel like I can take on the day. And that's sort of what you've seen in this past vlog. Um, and also working, just putting my head down and focusing on my work, um, keeping busy with that is what helps me a lot. So yeah, 
you saw me getting out of the house, keeping busy, uh, focusing on work, and then also having people around. I have to say my husband's been so amazing. He's come with me to every single appointment just to sit there and hold my underwear, basically. Um, I'm so lucky. I know not everyone's partner is able to go with them because of work or other reasons, but um, I've been really grateful that he's been by my side, both physically, mentally, emotionally, every way. When I told him the news today, I thought he was going to be quite upset, but he's he's always super positive. He's like, oh, it's just not the time. Let's let's try again. So that's really that's really helped a lot. So has Samgo. I just had Samgo noodles. Tamzai Samgo. Those noodles give me life. <laughs> but yeah, it's a new week. I will be making another weekly vlog next week. I'm going to be hanging out with my friends. I'm going to give myself some self-love and things are going to get better. So I will see you then. I'm going to end this vlog now because it is so, so, so long. I don't even know if anyone's watching at this point, but okay. Bye guys.